everybody. Welcome to Healing Outside the Box. My name is Jean Tiberio, and I'm a nutritionist and a wellness coach. I've got a little news for you. In the next couple of months, I'm going to be the author of a memoir. If you'd like to be notified when it comes out, just drop me a note on my website page, healingoutsidethebox.com, or sign up for the episode emails, and you will get the heads up when the book comes out. Now you may ask, why would anyone want to hear or read about the story of my life? Good question. Now I happen to be a disabled woman who hired personal care attendants during the peak of the opioid epidemic. The fact that a few addicted caregivers created some havoc in my life is a grand understatement. And just enough people said to me, hey Jean, you should write a book, that I actually did it. So if you'd like to know when it comes out, send a note on my email page with your first name and email, or text me with my new Google Voice at 978-712-9556 with your first name and email address. The Kindle ebook and paperback editions will be out first, and the audiobook will be available six to eight weeks later, because those are the rules for Audible, apparently. Okay, back to the podcast, which is... Can a starch really lower my blood sugars? Well, yes, it can. But first, I have to talk about balance of nature. The balance of nature people have been running commercials pretty constantly about the great way you can get all of your fruits and vegetables in one little huge capsule. Putting aside the Alice in Wonderland nature of that statement, let's take a look at how bad these people are and what you are going to get for the huge amount of money you're giving them. By the way, they actually tell you to take three capsules per day and polish off two bottles in only 30 days. So a three-month supply will cost $300. Let's hear from the Better Business Bureau, who are all over this. They gave Balance of Nature a 1.4 out of 5-star rating on their BBB website with many complaints, as they said. Among them, it received an FDA warning letter. And the FDA approves just about everything. But in my opinion, it shouldn't have approved this. There are no proof of any third-party test results. On the website, it says relatively expensive, but I think we can delete the word relatively. Also questionable health claims. Amen to that. Highly questionable research backing and large capsules, which you have to take three times per day. I looked at the nutrition facts on the label, and guess what? There is literally nothing in those capsules. They will cost you $90 per month plus shipping or $100 per month from Amazon if you're a Prime member. How do I know there is literally nothing in that capsule? Because they have to admit it on the label, or they'll be shut down for fraud. The words they use are, quote, daily value not established. What that means is that the value for any of those nutrients is so close to zero that it is essentially zero. They can't establish it because it is not a number. The amount of papaya or banana, or whatever you are supposed to be getting, is about the size of a period made with your pencil on a piece of paper. And that's the ground-up fruit, not the nutrients. And besides, in order to sterilize that powder, they would have to kill all the nutrients anyway. But don't worry about that, because there was nothing to begin with. And you would end up with ghastly food pathogens if they did not sterilize that powder. Here's my guess as to what it actually might be. It could be something like one melon rind, which is literally garbage. And remember that they never told us what that powder was. So please don't waste $100 a month. That kind of money can buy you a lot of organic fruits and vegetables, which will have plenty of nutrients. Okay, I'll get off my soapbox 
and talk about something more positive. And that's about the wonderful things that oatmeal can do for you. And yes, even sweetened oatmeal. By the way, if you want to sweeten your oatmeal naturally and don't want to get into artificial sweeteners or table sugar, you can use maple syrup, honey, or date syrup. If you want to make your own date syrup, because I know the store brand can be a little pricey, just mix one cup dates with one cup boiling water and stick it in the hand blender. And remember that oatmeal is a very inexpensive and nutritious product. Now let's look at the research on oatmeal. I'll put the articles that I found interesting in the show notes for you. And I'll include a couple of recipes for ways you can include oatmeal in your diet if you're not interested in eating it plain for breakfast. For example, you could do banana oatmeal muffins or quick breads, granola, etc. One oatmeal study tested severely uncontrolled diabetic patients in the ICU of all places. They switched out the diabetic formula in their tube feeding with pulverized oatmeal and additional vitamins. The blood sugars dropped so significantly that the doctors were afraid that the sugar would go too low and they would have to significantly lower their insulin dose. Their blood sugars, again this was ICU, returned to normal with half of the insulin that they were previously getting when the study started. And that was over only five days. But here's what's cool about this. The beneficial effects of the oatmeal lasted for weeks after they returned to their regular diet, and they continued to need less insulin. People who ate the least amount of animal fat had the best sugars. And I know what you're thinking. If their diet was primarily oatmeal, they are not eating meat, fried foods, and processed sweet foods. You're right about that. In other words, is it the taking away of the unhealthy foods or the adding of the healthy foods that made the difference? That is a complicated question because our healthy gut bacteria come into play as well. And people aren't as easy to test as, say, laboratory rats, for so many reasons. But as someone with a science background, I'm fascinated by why those sugars drop so fast. I usually give people the song and dance about choosing, say, sweet potatoes over white potatoes because the fiber in the sweet potatoes slow down the absorption of glucose into your bloodstream. But could the same be said for oatmeal? Well, turns out it's even better for oatmeal. Let's look at another study. There was a study in the journal Nutrients titled, quote, The Metabolic Effects of Oats Intake in Patients with Type 2 Diabetes, end quote. This was a meta-analysis that looked at several studies altogether. They said that oatmeal intake significantly reduced A1C levels in diabetic patients, which tells you that the daily glucose fluctuations were much lower or less dramatic with oatmeal than with the controls. In other words, it wasn't just during the time that the oatmeal was eaten. It was throughout the day, and the LDL cholesterol levels drop significantly as well. This is really important for people with uncontrolled diabetes because cardiovascular disease is a huge problem for type 2 diabetics. Researchers believe that this is due to a substance called beta-glucan in the oatmeal, which has also been supported in other studies. There are many studies showing definitively that the type of fiber in oatmeal and also beans, has a very specific effect on our gut bacteria, or our microbiota. 
The theory is that the particular gut bacteria that grow with these fiber foods produce a substance called butyrate that is associated with better blood sugar control. So the oatmeal is acting like a prebiotic ingredient, promoting the growth of healthy lactobacillus bacteria in our gut. There was another study in the Canadian Journal of Diabetes. The free version of this journal article only had the abstract, so I'll quote from the abstract. They added oatmeal to the diet while trying to keep other factors like non-smoking, gender, and age equal. Quote, the result is a hypocaloric plant-based dietary intervention that is low in fat and excludes animal protein for a short period. This short-term dietary intervention has been associated with a significant reduction in mean blood sugar concentrations and an improved insulin sensitivity in patients with type 2 diabetes. Almost forgotten, short-term dietary oatmeal interventions are an economical yet highly effective tool to achieve better glycemic control in patients with type 2 diabetes. Close quote. Oatmeal is, in fact, very economical, and it provides a decent source of protein with all of these other benefits. Now, we know that saturated fat increases the risk of type 2 diabetes. So all those doctors that told you a steak and salad diet would lower your blood sugars were actually wrong about that. Lowered meat consumption is actually linked to better diabetes control. Traditionally trained dietitians have been singing that tune for 50 years. So lower saturated fat leads to lowered insulin resistance and therefore lower blood sugars. So animal fat for sure is linked to diabetes. But what about animal protein? As it turns out, and this is the real news, Animal protein causes insulin resistance. Here is the theory. Meat protein breaks down to branched-chain amino acids. A breakdown product from these particular branched-chain amino acids stimulates fat uptake in muscles and promotes fat accumulation in muscle tissue. What they're finding is that animal protein tends to inhibit the benefits of oatmeal for the reason I just mentioned. So if you want to embark on, I don't know, a three-day oatmeal cleanse, you may want to stay away from meat and butter for those three days. And believe it or not, if you plan on an oatmeal cleanse-type diet, I and just about everyone else would recommend you do it with some type of glucose monitor for the three days and with a doctor's approval. Especially if you are on glucose meds of any kind, which I assume you might be if you're a diabetic. The reason is because your glucose might drop so fast that your blood sugar would get low and you would have to back off on the diabetic meds. So please don't do anything unless you're under strict physician's guidance. Now, it's starting to sound like I'm recommending a three-day oatmeal cleanse. Not necessarily, but if you do, it would be a lot better than just about any other type of cleanse. One of the many reasons I'm against cleanses is that it can rearrange your gut microbiota, and probably not in a good way. Eating a lot of oatmeal for three days, or, I don't know, forever, would rearrange your gut microbiota in a good way, and they will repay you by improving your blood sugars, blood lipids, and weight. Don't believe me? Give it a try and let me know how it goes. You can text me on my new Google Voice. Very excited about this. The number is 978-712-9556. Or you can email me on my website contact page. And that's at Healing Outside the Box. Now that's all I have for you today. Be well, 
and stay tuned for another episode of Healing Outside the Box.